Good morning. I am Dr. Sundar. I am a cardiothoracic and a transplant surgeon, heart and lung transplant surgeon in Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. And this morning, we have with us Dr. Catherine Sudarshan, who is a consultant, cardiothoracic and a transplant surgeon in the Papworth Hospital, Cambridge, UK. I've known Catherine for over a decade now, and it's an absolute pleasure having her with us this morning. And we plan to discuss on ex vivo lung perfusion in terms of uh, benefiting more patients who are waiting for lung transplantation. Um, data suggests that roughly about a fourth or one fifth of donor lungs are usable, which means about 20 to 25 percent of lungs are usable. The rest are discarded for various reasons. We now have uh, ex vivo perfusion systems with an aim to improve and use otherwise unusable donor lungs for the patients. So I would start off by um, asking you what your experience on this is and what your take on this is. Um, thank you. Um, I would probably be even more pessimistic with the data than you are mm. in the sense for our center for example if we had a hundred offers, we only use 11 of them okay. when it comes to lungs. So it is actually not as good. Um, I think primarily because lung is unlike all other solid organs. It's a unique organ in the sense it has an air fluid interface. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore it behaves slightly differently. Obviously prone to infections and most of our patients nowadays have been in hospital for some time multi-trauma with multiple blood transfusions, long-time ventilation, hospital-acquired pneumonia, and the list goes on. So when it comes to actually retrieving lungs and then trying to either assess them or optimization, um, we now have two systems available. Um, the standard ex vivo lung perfusion, uh, the EVLP, as we've all known it for a long time, um, and we also now have the organ care system, uh, the Transmedics organ care system. Um, they have fairly similar components in some ways, i.e. they both have the capacity to assess and optimize the organs, but they are also in some ways strikingly different uh, in what they offer. Okay. Um, so, in India, um, the patients have to fund their own treatment uh, and lung transplantation and as you rightly said uh, a lung transplant is a different cohort of patients compared to other solid organ transplants and they need a lot of treatment after. Now in this scenario having to use an ex vivo system in patients who the majority have to self fund mm. that would have an implication wouldn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. To be honest, um, even it has an implication for us. Um, yes, being part of the National Health Service, everything is free for our patients, but the NHS and our hospital uh, funds a lot of these things. So, for example, if I put a pair of lungs on the EVLP system, that would cost us around about £8,000. Um, the Transmedics organ care system uh, comes at a package of about thirty thousand pounds, so they're not cheap. Thirty thousand per patient. Per patient. Okay. For okay. the disposables. All right. So, what percent of lungs that you put through these ex vivo systems then become usable? Right. Um, so far, we've been very selective for obvious reasons, and cost being one of them. Uh, so, for the Transmedics organ care system that we have put them in, I would. We would we probably have used about ninety percent of them. Ninety percent. Otherwise, lungs which would have been rejected. Some probably not. So I, I must say, because we uh, when we started the program, we obviously wanted to learn um, and we wanted to you know get our expertise built up because it involves a lot of personnel. Um, it has a lot of steps that need to be done, um, and therefore. Maybe for the first few, we probably 
would have otherwise just directly transplanted them, yeah. but because they had certain borderline characteristics, we, we used the, um, the transmedic system. We were part of the INSPIRE trial, mm -hmm. when the trial was conducted, which obviously has shown very optimistic results. Um, so yes, so, so that's our outcome. When it comes to EVLP, the sit situation is probably different. Um, and the big difference between the two, obviously, is the Transmedics organ care system, you take it to the donor hospital. Uh, so you take the lungs out and you put them on the machine and you transport on the machine. I was going to ask you that. Whereas the EVLP system we have, the lungs are brought to Papworth Hospital and then put on the system. So, so there's, a, there's a difference on ischemic time and everything else as a result of it. Because the one point I thought perhaps was relevant to our country is the long distances mm. to be traveled. Mm -hmm. India, as you know, is a huge country, both in population and in size. Mm -hmm. And if one were to have a donor, let's say in Delhi, mm -hmm. and to get the organ to Chennai, mm -hmm. would take a minimum of three to four hours. Mm -hmm. So this could be put in good use in order to look after the lungs, yes. allowing yes. longer travel. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, so when it comes to ischemic time, I'm sure in our training days, you and I, memorize this number, magic number six for lungs, and it was always six was that borderline. I'm not entirely sure that is as accurate as it was actually taught to us. Um, for, I re say that for many reasons. I mean, some of the American centers have to transport them for a very long distance, as well as Australia, for example. So I think there are a lot of characteristics that will actually determine that. But you're absolutely right. There's no doubt about it. The shorter the ischemic time, it has to be better for the organ. That goes without saying. So. Uh, we did have a recent conference where you had come as well. That was in Chennai. We had the uh, annual meeting of the Indian Association of Cardiothoracic Surgeons where we had Dr. Shafke Shivji yes. who did mention about this. And he did mention what he thought in future perhaps to have an organ care and a repair center where you know all the organs were flown in there, the organs were diagnosed, mm. they were fixed, mm. made usable, mm. and then benefit uh, a larger number of recipients. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, I mean, actually, Dr. Keshavji is doing it already. Right. And he has what is called the Organ Repair Laboratory, where uh, they are getting lungs, from what I gather, uh, getting lungs from centers, borderline lungs, where he puts them on EVLP. He does bronchoscopies, lavages, uh, uh, he gives the antibiotics, uh, identifies the microbiology, everything else, uh, you know, changes the fluid dynamics, see whether there's lung edema and all of that, and then sends them back to the center. Okay. So, so, so I think he's already doing it, but that would just be phenomenal. Good. Having something like that would just be absolutely beautiful. Uh, because end-stage lung disease, as you know, I mean, uh, we all know, yeah. lung transplant is the treatment forward in terms of survival and quality of life. And anything to increase the donor pool would be good. Now, having spoken about lungs, we do have organ systems for the heart as well. Indeed. Uh, so, yes, um, the organ system for heart has been available longer than the lungs. Um, we obviously have a lot of experience with that, much more than the lungs, I would say, and that's primarily because uh, we use it for all our DCD hearts, or almost all of our DCD hearts. Okay. We've probably got less than a handful where we've done cold storage of a DCD heart. Um, it works very well. Um, once again, Papworth participated in the original trials uh, that were conducted by Transmedics, the company, uh, we, we were part of the Proceed 2 trial, and we, uh, and we now have it as a, a standard system for us, for okay. more, almost all of our DCD hearts. So it's a lot more standardized, and it works very well, and it is beautiful for a surgeon. For example, um, I'm not constrained by time to do the dissection. I mean, one of the things you presented yesterday where you said you leave some bits of the bat behind in order to implant the heart to reduce ischemia, whereas 
when the heart is on the system, I'm not restricted so much with time. I have the luxury of spending a few more minutes to do what I need to do. More so if it's a redo case. Absolutely. Uh, in, in, yeah, for a bad explant, absolutely. It, 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 is, it is a beautiful system. <coughs> what percent of your heart transplants are DCD donor hearts? So, so we have expanded our DCD heart program by at least, if I remember my numbers correctly, at least 30-35% in the last few years. Okay. Um, uh, a lot of our patients, especially are bad recipients who would otherwise not get on to have a heart um, are being transplanted because of the DCD program. Okay. And because um, I'm sure you probably are aware, in the UK we have now a super urgent heart system and an urgent heart system. So a lot of these stable patients with a VAG don't really get a look in for okay. the hearts that become available. And donor organ shortage is a, is a big challenge. Worldwide. Absolutely. Yeah. More so for us than uh, the hepatic and the renal colleagues, I think. Okay. So. Uh, because in India, as I was mentioning yesterday, as far as heart transplant is concerned, we have come of age. We are still, you know, finding our feet in terms of lung transplant, although we've got many centers doing it for the last uh, five or six years. The, the donation rate, uh, as per the statistics of the state of Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. last year there were 31% of donor lungs which were usable. So, which is um, at least three times, and I'm proud to say, compared to what was in the UK. Uh, and uh, the, the use, and once if this comes into practice in India, mm -hmm. probably more patients would be benefited mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and so, apart from cost, what else, if, I don't, if you don't mind me asking you a question, sure. what would be your limiting factor? Is it, is it fundamentally the cost? Predominantly the cost mm -hmm. is one, mm -hmm. and, and the second, it's getting better now, it's no longer a limiting factor, mm -hmm. was convincing the physicians that lung transplant works mm -hmm. and to have lung transplant as a part of the treatment algorithm in end-stage lung disease. So with the improvement of uh, understanding and creating more physician awareness, mm -hmm. the referral practices have changed. Mm -hmm. Now we have patients who are referred at the right time or earlier so, uh, so more, benefits, more patients are benefited. Mm -hmm. And um, you've been here quite often and uh, you're uh, connected to India in ways more than one. Uh, how do you foresee uh, the future of heart and lung transplant given the enthusiasm of the current lot of people? So, um, uh, India never ceases to amaze me okay. in, in more than one way. Um, I am always humbled with the amount of enthusiasm people have for uh, wanting to know more, wanting to learn more. Um, a lot of the times I look at some of the senior surgeons who um, are probably a lot more senior than I am, um, you know, having the passion and the desire to, to want to go further. Um, India has many beautiful things, and one of the things is the population and the numbers. Um, and if you really look at population, if you haven't got enough heart failure, if you haven't got enough lung failure patients, that's purely because of lack, lack of awareness or um, a, a lack in the diagnosis rather than the patients not being available. Sure. So, so I think there's always the volume and there will always be the donors that are available and to match them together will happen. Um, having said that, I'm also not a big fan, if I may say so, of having lots of small centers. Um, if you look at the ISHLT data, there's plenty of evidence that the fewer transplant a center does, uh, the worse the outcome is overall. I know it could come as a blanket statement, but, but that is... High volume centers obviously Absolutely. have better outcomes. Absolutely. And transplantation is not a one-man show. No. You and I would do a set of graphs, or do an aortic valve replacement. We will then see the patient in six or eight weeks' time shake their hands, say goodbye, and that will be the end. Whereas transplantation, uh, once they've had it done, 
they are attached to that center for the rest of the life. Right. Um, it's, in my opinion, it should be very much driven by a multidisciplinary team. And I would even go to the extent of saying it should really be driven by the physicians because they actually are the gateposts for it. They are the ones who are diagnosing it. And yes, it involves all other specialties like surgery, pathology, microbiology, hematology, psychology, you know, a nutritionist, um, a nurse educator, the, the whole package. And I'm not sure whether if each center just does five or ten a year, whether they would firstly have the resources to invest, secondly whether they'll gain the experience in, in uh, doing uh, this, this beautiful art. So, so I'd hate it to be diluted. Mm -hmm. I think there should be a selected number of centers. And, and the more you do, we all know, uh, the better you get at it. Absolutely, absolutely. So looking at the bottlenecks, as you were mentioning, we have the numbers. We have the number of patients with disease and the donors as well. Uh, of late, there have been programs, government-aided programs in Tamil Nadu, in the state of Andhra Pradesh and Mumbai, where the government allots as much as rupees 25 lakhs towards the cost of a transplant. So hopefully, in the years to come, cost would cease to be uh, a limiting factor. And one thing about situation specific to India is TB endemicity. We do have TB, yeah. more relevant to lungs than to heart. Mm. And, and I suppose uh, your ex vivo systems okay. would help us teasing out patients who are potentially, uh, and rather than, you know, as a recipient, we have all the time mm. to work up a patient to see if he's got. Absolutely. We don't have the luxury of time with the donor. Absolutely. And I would foresee this as another plus point Indeed. in allowing us to Indeed. do. Indeed. And I, so the, the, the other thing I would like to say, if I may say so, is India produces a phenomenal amount of work when it comes to the medical arena. The one thing that I think probably India still lacks is precise data collection. True. And um, what would be nice is to have, you know, a central register, even per state maybe, where all patients who've been donated, you know, who've donated their organs or recipients who've had an implant are documented so that we could actually have some precise data collection and looking at outcomes, which would also then answer questions that you've just raised on the incidence of infection, the incidence of organs being turned down for the various reasons. Because what I sometimes now find, it's very much anecdotal. True. Uh, there are some individual centers that are collecting phenomenal amount of data, but those are a minority. We do have this uh, Indian uh, Society mm -hmm. for Heart and Lung Transplant, and one of the first things to do is to organize the nationwide registry, uh, which we hope will happen in due course. Well, well. It's been a pleasure having you here with us, Dr. Catherine. Thank you very much. It's been absolutely my pleasure to be here, uh, Dr. Sundar, and thank you for having me. Okay. Good.